There's other comments I guess I'm going to read. That I don't know. Or is it going? Okay, now we're going. Continue okay, i got to start this all over again. That sucks. <laughs> like, totally. So, everybody on the live show, sorry, I'm starting all over again. What's up, everybody? It's G from the F Word, and I'm here with Vass and Big, big Fs. Fs. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we have to start over again. We are on such a big roll. Um, mm-hmm. But at least we got the visual part. True. Well, okay. the visual part's more for the live show for the people. Live show. So, okay. And you can so, delve into it later. Yeah. So, okay. I'm going to try to get us back on. Okay. hope everyone has, has having a good time. And if you're listening to us from Stitcher, uh, welcome this is our first episode on Stitcher, <laughs> and uh, if you're listening everywhere else, we just appreciate it. I just figured, I realized there's like thousands and thousands of podcasts, and the fact that like even one person tunes in every week, I know that there's probably like four or five that actually like listen to it on the weekends. It's yeah, it's still a big deal. I don't know. I it's like I've gone to a point where I'm just happy that you know there's a there's it a still small has group. traction, right? So yeah. there you go. But I'm like it's it's cool. So now that we're on Stitcher, that's another avenue that we can go to and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. On the live show because we're halfway through it now. That's why I sound a little bit all over the place, and that's why this is starting off a little bit messy. Got some artwork at a Sask Expo, which is very com- like a Comic Con kind of miniature very version low of budget it. Comic Con, very low yeah. budget. Um. One piece from at Nitro Geek. Uh, it's a really cool wooden piece of the Avengers comic covers, and if you go to their Instagram, you can find a lot, if not all, the classic comic covers in a wooden panel, and it's 3D. Uh, our good friend uh, D. Cunos, who you've heard on the Deep Dive Infinity War and Deep Dive Endgame uh, episodes that we have, which you can go back and take a look at because we break the whole movies down, both of them. Uh, he gave us really cool Carnage and Venom artwork that he did himself. And the Atomic Victory Squad, uh, which is this new comic that's going out from these guys that created a movie called Wolf Cop. Some of you may know it, some of you not may not. But Wolf Cop and Wolf Cop 2 and Atomic Victory Squad about two years ago was just a uh, thought they had in their mind. And now it's a we, I have a physical copy of it signed from them. So it's really badass. Okay, now let's pick up where we were. All oh, right, and take two. And it was Vass's birthday. Cool. Not too long ago, about yeah. a week ago. So, uh, yeah, anyways, House Tully, we almost drank half the scotch. Pretty much. Well, I think it was, it was like a quarter left, if that. So, yeah, they go down pretty good. It was good. They don't, it was they don't only look really well, but they taste amazing. And, so, like, you can well, tell the it's, scotches. It's because they're they're yeah. traditional scotches. So, right. the, the Lannister scotch is Lagavulin, for instance. Yeah. Which one's Dalwini Stark? Mm-hmm. House Stark is a Dalwini. And then the Old Ben is the Night's Watch, which we were talking with Nick and we're like definitely gonna buy one that we can open and drink, yeah, and then have one for part of the collection. Mm-hmm. Apparently, that's like the hardest one to get though. Like they only got like four in our province. Our province got only a few in total, actually. And they never and, made it to shelves. Well, and the fun no, the funny thing is, it depends which store you went to. Now that now that we have like a the ban lifted on having private uh, liquor stores, there's how many, and you have no idea who has what. You literally had to go to every single one because we went to. Or Nick went and checked out one place and they said, oh, you should have came like a week ago. I had every single one. Mm-hmm. Now they only had a few left. I'm like, well, that's just ridiculous. Whereas when I went to like a Sobeys liquor store or uh, uh, Willow Park, they only had, oh, we only get these four in Canada for some reason. Or in Saskatchewan. The rest of them you can get in Alberta or yeah. anywhere else. So we're still tracking them down. I'm not going to end this fight. And, you know, there's ways to get it. We have an avenue and we're going to we're gonna definitely get it. So that how avenue. many do you have? Out of the I have five out of the there's eight. Eight? Okay. So how much does Nick have? Like He's got four? the exact same as I do. Oh, yep. We have the exact same ones and we're after those the last Those are the ones three. that are on the right side of your, like where you sit, like to your right. Those are the, those are the ones you're talking about? They're over the fireplace. Yeah, yeah. over them okay. on the mantle. Yeah. This guy's so. got a fireplace. And he has a mantle. Yeah. Wooden. Whoops. Burning fireplace. Right Wood burning. my fire. microphone. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. Um... What else we got? Okay, big week. And by big week, I mean the ban has been lifted on spoilers yep. um, for, for Endgame. Game. And I'm getting bitched by followers now for having spoiler slides, which I just find like, you guys got to shut the fuck up. You'll yeah. never win. No, ever. No. You never. See, you just got to filter like, out the noise. Just let it go. It <laughs> and I literally matter. said, I'm like, I said, yeah. what's the problem with swiping twice? Like, yeah. if they haven't seen the movie, they're not going to get spoiled. If you've seen it, you swipe twice and it's right there. Yeah. yeah. And this guy has commented multiple times. I told him, like, listen, like, I like, you because know, I didn't, like, be a dick to him. I said, listen, I respect what you're trying to do, but it's my page. Like, I'm going to post I think I he's just post. trolling you. I don't think he's actually trying to be. No, he is, because he's done it on multiple posts. I think he's just being a plug. Well, 
I think he's just trying to make himself relevant on mm-hmm. his page. I think that's what he's doing. It's like the same people Block him. that like he, no, because so like he's being nice. He got uh, that post sent yeah. to him the one time, and automatically someone's like, "Oh, you should find the person who did this and credit them." It's like, listen, man, I get this from all over the place. Yeah, like. Who are you trying to be right now? Who are you trying to impress? And what are you actually trying to do? So mm-hmm. those people annoy the shit out of me. If it's art, I can see that like as a point. Like, okay, you should credit the artist. Yeah. But for a meme, yeah. if it's not watermarked, they didn't give a shit about the meme. Yeah, exactly. Memes are like everywhere. Universal. Everybody shares them it's all like, the time. It's uh, like, what is it? Public. What's that word? Public something. You know, like how certain songs, it's like public knowledge. No, no, not, not like copyright. Or, like you can it, yeah, it, there's copyright. It's like it's a public forum. I can't remember what it's called. There's a like the nur- like nursery rhymes are public for everyone. Like no one can claim public the use. Per- yeah, so, well, I can't, there's a specific word I can't figure it out. Someone well, the thing is it. this: most, most, if not everything, is public mm-hmm. use until you go to use it for any type of monetary purposes. So even nursery rhymes and stuff, you still would have to. Like no, you, you can't don't. just you yeah, can't you palm can. one off as yourself. True. Public no, no. domain. No, public domain. Public domain. That's it. Thank you, whoever said that. Ogre man. No, public Ogre domain. Man. It means you can use it without having to worry about licensing or bullshit like that. You mm-hmm. can use it at your whim because it's public domain. So that's all. But can you use it to make money is what I'm asking. Well, it depends. Like for my page, like yeah, I get well, almost every single post of mine gets taken down and I have to appeal it because it's like I'm using like especially how I met your mother posts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I actually like looked into this to make sure I wasn't going to get sued. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's like since if you do make money off it. Yeah. You can't do it. But since I'm like, I'm You're free and I'm yet. educating and I'm like talking about it, I can use like a short clip. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. But if I'm like making money off it, you can't do it. Meaning but for memes, you can't do it at all or you have to negotiate. To well, you have to have license. approval to do it. Okay. That's it's not that you can't do it. It's just you have to get licensing approval kind of thing. So, yeah. well, gotcha. yeah, like it, it's, it's yeah. kind of funny how all of that stuff works. But I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. it safeguards the artists and the creators. But yeah. when it comes well, to I, memes, it's like, it's nothing. Not Like it's not. When you I see the know. same one on so many different sites, like who owns it at the yeah. end of the day? Also, matter. I don't consider memes art. So if someone like <laughs> they're like clever, someone, yeah, they're clever sure as shit. Are. But yeah, I yeah, for sure they are. Um, well, um, um. Okay, Spider Man Far From Home trailer. Do you want to get into that? Do you want to get into it? Arturo yeah. sent me the it uh, trailer. Is Arturo here? Yes, he is. And do we have wow. or do we have any questions? I don't know. Somebody asked about Scooby Doo Zombie Island. I have no idea what. Yeah, the, I don't know what the hell that is. I know what Scooby Doo is. The name but... is DBZ Evolution, which is mm-hmm. a shitty movie I heard. So I don't know if that comment deserves any merit. <laughs> well, it didn't come out in '88. Yeah, no, it came born. out like a couple years ago. Then I wasn't into Dragon Ball back then. I don't think we have any comments from like recently. Just Let's talk about it before we get into yeah, the big trailer. Our hero's here. Uh, yeah, there he is. Uh, so it trailer came out. I like the way it started mm-hmm. a lot. Like I like that it was just this kind of in. It was kind of tense, creepy as shit. Creepy scene. <laughs> I thought that was cool. That old lady was nuts. I was like, yeah. I, I never saw the first It, like the new release. It. Oh, you haven't seen no, it? No, I yet. haven't seen it, but I, I saw clips and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's interesting where they're going with it. Now all the kids are older, I guess. Well, okay. So the original It was them being older and then going back when they were younger. So it was kind of like uh, flashbacks to when they were younger and then getting their club together or whatever. Okay. This new iteration was when Georgie goes into the sewer Mm -hmm. directly from there. It doesn't skip to the future. Okay. This is in the future, but it looks like it's going to be a mix of the two. So we're still going to get the young cast, which I thought was stellar in uh, in the first. So the older cast was in the original. Well, not this older cast, but the original was based on the older versions of these kids that dealt with this thing in Derry. Okay, interesting. Um, But yeah, it started off really good. Uh, and I, I, then by the end of it, it just like every other trailer, tune, 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 like sh- just shot after shot after yeah. shot after shot. It could have just been the one things. scene, and that would have been like because it's a teaser, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why they. I had a, I had a weird v- the visit vibe from it from that scene. Is that what the one with the grandparents? Yeah, that was a creepy ass movie. I saw that when I was a kid in theaters. Oh my goodness! Well, how that didn't come out that long ago. I was probably like 15, 14. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what. But, like, that shit was freaky. And I thought it was actually, like, it's on Netflix, and I want to watch it again. But I thought it was actually, what I remember, that was a good movie. It was it was, it was was very creepy. It was well done. The kid, the one kid annoyed the hell out of me, but, like, it was very unsettling. Yeah. And so I had that vibe yeah, no, from I mean, it. Um, But it looks mm-hmm. like it's showing Pennywise's origins yep. a little bit, which was really cool. Was he the the dad? Yeah. The dad in the picture. In the photo, yeah. So that basically that mean that Pennywise is immortal, or someone's donned the persona of okay, Pennywise? Okay, so... Pennywise comes back every 27 years. Was it 27 years? Oh, okay. He's this entity that has been haunting Derry for oh, okay. decades, 
right? And so nobody knows exactly where he came from mm-hmm. or anything mm-hmm. or, or why he exists or where like like his origins are very unknown. Yeah. So this one looks like it might be throwing Delving that in there. Into it, yeah. Um but he comes back and he ruins everyone's life for a time and then he pieces out and Sounds he's right. super scary and he does some weird shaky things with his head now and it's you know it's pretty uh yeah, it's cool, an interesting cool. concept. And it, it was a Stephen King, obviously one of his. Yeah, I, that I knew. I stuff, so. <laughs> I'm excited. I feel like we did we see it together. Yeah. The first one, yeah. No, I thought the first one was really well done. I, I might remember. come see this one too. I missed. Watch I think the I was, first one. I think I, I was will. pissing because I missed that rock scene. That was like really, I guess, hardcore. I guess because you were saying like they could have died because they were throwing like big ass rocks at each other. Oh heads. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited for this one. Uh, was it two years ago? The first one came out. Yeah. Okay, so it's been. A while. I thought it was like. Yeah. Doesn't seem that long ago. They but, greenlit it right away. Mm-hmm. I think before it actually came out, they greenlit it. The fact yeah. that they already have a trailer in production that means like they were just starting it as soon as that one ended. Well, no, yeah. So they greenlit it. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, when you're shooting a movie, historically, it doesn't take that long to actually shoot the thing. Well, it's like you, it's only it's only like a few months. Yeah. And like even the actors, they're only there for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they move on to something else. That's why some actors have like three, four movies that come out in a year because mm. it's like boom, 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 right? Um, so they would have greenlit it, shot it. I think they shot it last year. I believe so. Most likely. Yeah. And then now they've got their first official trailer. I'm just like, I was surprised to see that the kids were coming back as flashbacks. So mm-hmm. I wonder if they're actually going to add anything else, like maybe PTSD after the event. And you can see like shit like, because I haven't seen the original It. I don't know if they... Did flashbacks as kids in the they second did. part? They did. They okay. did. So what? Every time they introduced a character, it's been years since I watched it, but every time they in, they brought in a new character that was like, "Hey, he's back," kind of thing, because that's mm-hmm. what the very very first one, the original, was yeah. about. They went to the person, and then they did their flashback of what they looked like when they were a kid, and then they move forward from there. So interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Uh, again, I wish the trailer was just that opening scene because mm-hmm. it looks. That looked yeah. exceptional, like on its own. Just yeah, more so the tension on how you know, and, and the tension and the weird, unsettling imagery that's in there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, we never saw Hellboy. Somebody no. asked about our thoughts. I probably no. will not see Hellboy. Also, apparently, Detective Pikachu comes out tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah this weekend. Yeah, we totally uh, uh, slept on that one. Yeah, watch like, it eventually. Like I'm I not... said, Avengers and Game of Thrones have taken over. So. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's gonna be a busy month, man. Yeah. This movie's back and, and then back. John Wick's the week after, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to go see that one before I see yeah. Detective Pikachu, even though, because yeah. you know what the problem is with Detective Pikachu in that trailer, is that there's all those other Pokemon that I have no idea who they are. I'm second only, gen, yeah. no, I'm not even second, there's like, they're into seven. Yeah. Oh, like, frick. I am, all, but they have to, because yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's so many generations of people that are, are doing it, right? Yeah. Um, But for me, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I only like the originals, and everybody else, I'm just going to be lost. It almost feels like it's like, do you have to know the other things to like this one? And yeah. I'll probably get into a point where in that movie, but based on that trailer where I'm like, I don't, I don't know who this person is. This guy is this guy. And by guy, I mean, Pokemon pocket monster. Yeah. To be fair though, I feel like from the trailer I saw, and I believe it was only the first one, mm-hmm. they didn't really showcase a lot of the new gen Pokemon. They really just, just like a couple the, scenes. Yeah. 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 So I feel like they're going to just focus on the original one just because their target demographic is like, you know, kids, but also the parents of the kids. Yeah, know Pokemon. Absolutely. Right, but I mean, those kids are the ones that are playing Pokemon. But even Go. they would know the Gen One. Like in yeah. Pokemon, it's yeah. always that shit. So I feel like you won't be lost watching it because I feel like they're not going to dive too much into the lore of Pokemon with all the random ones. But yeah, I think it'll be good. I'm excited. Also, Pokemon Go is making a huge comeback. Mm-hmm. Like at my school, all I see are kids sitting in class playing Pokemon Go. I'm like, oh man, that was an epidemic. I was even a part of it. Like you go to certain spots in the city, you go to certain parts in the city, and like you know that was a hot spot. Someone threw up. Um, which we call it uh, alert, alert, mm-hmm. and like you'd be there for hours. Downtown and university were like the biggest hotspots for well, that kind of stuff. I stopped playing after the Dragonite incident of 2016. <laughs> what was it Dragonite? Yeah. We oh. chased a Dragonite we were down in Saska- one downtown place. Saskatoon, and we were like for blocks. We were tracing a Dragonite, and then I was the only one that got it. It was so he mad. He lost it. I, I, I was the only one. Another, Seventeen another friend of mine. ultra balls, and that fucking thing would not like. Yeah. And we're talking. I had the curve down, so my targeting was perfect. I had the spin, everything. That was an old phone, too. I got to wonder if I logged into my account, it should still act. If you used it, I logged back in, so I used my uh, Google, my Gmail. I think yeah. I used my So Gmail, that's what I did, yeah. and I saw, like, 2016 was when I was playing it. And it was just, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, so long ago. <laughs> before we get into the Spider-Man one, because I saw some people, I saw, like, the... Oh, they're, con- they're, they're having a yeah. conversation. Um, uh, Chris Hemsworth signed on for two movies. 
Yeah. He and he even said that he would do it forever. Uh, yeah, he's could. he's gone been renewed obviously because of So Ragnarok will that and... just be on the Thor movie in Guardians or as Well, Guardians I think because the, the script was already done <laughs> before they fired game James Gunn, they were originally going to use his script. Yeah. I don't know how complete it was. Yeah. My guess is they're the they could write him in, but I don't think he'd have to be a bigger role. But I don't think they're gonna do it. I, think I wouldn't. Gonna, yeah, it's... I love the guy to death. I love his character so much, but he would take away from the Guardians at that point. Yep. And I think uh, there's some big things happening with the Guardians, especially if they decide to introduce Adam Warlock. Uh, yeah, I and believe he said they were, and didn't he? I think that was supposed to be the main catalyst. I mean, they hinted at the very end of Guardians of the Galaxy two. Right. So three, you'd expect Adam Warlock to come around and mess with stuff too and who knows he might go at it with uh infinity stones too but they don't technically exist whatever there's a whole thing with that probably but who knows that being said i would pay double to see an as guardians of the galaxy movie oh like, yeah i would i would pay all the money in the world to see that uh so bad because that would be awesome yeah. and uh, specifically just watching thor groot and rocket just doing their own thing yeah i mean drax in there a little bit mantis or whatever but those three are mm-hmm. just th- th- that's travel companions right there absolutely and yes he did say as guardian of the galaxies as guardians as guardian. of the galaxy mm-hmm. um okay spider-man far from home trailer that yep. was i guess the big one because we're gonna oh, we're gonna get into the game of thrones uh at last episode by the way but yeah spider-man far from home gentlemen I like people. I don't know. I don't understand why these comic book fans are always like proclaiming about comic book accuracy. I'm sorry. The MCU is much bigger than the comic books at this point. Like you can read the comic books. That's great. Yeah. The MCU is not comic book accurate. It doesn't have to be. It's its own thing now. Like it's also Sony too. So they haven't been very accurate about a lot of things. But, yeah. but a majority of Marvel fans nowadays don't read the comic books. I've never. Or have they? Like, they haven't read. I've never. I haven't. I've read a couple, but I'm not, yeah. like, an avid fan. I've read some of the big ones. Like, I've read, I've actually read this one, um, and I've read a lot of the Spider-Man ones, and I've read, I have never read a Guardians of the Galaxy one. I never read a Thor one. No. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man was it for me. Yeah. And then DC mainly, but I am X-Men. excited. I, I, read, I read more X-Men. I'm excited for this movie just because, A, it looks like it has a more serious tone, or, mm-hmm. like, not merely a tone, but more theme. I'd yeah. say. Well, mm-hmm. we're out of high school. We're we're in the real world. Yeah. I think the jokes look pretty, like, it looks pretty, you know, Spider-Man-like. I it it the, fits his character, obviously. I thought yeah. the MJ scene where he goes to, like, say he loves yeah. her, he's like, yeah. that you're Spider-Man? <laughs> well, no, well, it's kind of obvious, which is true because, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Spider-Man shows up to Washington, D.C., shows up in Europe, yeah. you know? And, and they made her out to be, a, like, a very perceptive and intelligent character in the first yeah. one. Like, I'd be amazed if she wasn't the one to figure it out. I'm like, well, yeah, of course she did. Like, and also, there's a theory that she is Nick Fury's daughter. Which I don't know. That'd be weird. But because the uh, theory is that in Homecoming, when it kind of showed like the credits, yeah. an eye patch went over her eye. Mm. And I don't know. He's in Europe too, I guess. So I don't really know much about the theory, but I think it's interesting. It's a bit of a stretch, but hey, you never know. Oh. Um, That's it. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. Well, our tickets are out now. There's a DQ lot of talk news. on whether, you know, as the trailer revealed that he's from the another word mm-hmm. yep. world, and yep. he dropped that uh, coin phrase, the multiverse kind of thing, and everyone's been freaking out over that, over and, that yeah. too. But the biggest question is that Quentin Beck, they said, has always been like a trickster and like a, that kind of he, thing. He's so. a failed, he's a failed uh, illusionist, uh, magician, a magician, yeah. and he does special effects stuff. Exactly. So they're. The thing is, we don't know how this Quentin Beck and how he's going to play. As much as we see, he's technically part of the Avengers in, in like through Nick Fury, his rebuilding his empire kind of thing. Okay. And it's making it seem like he's hel- he's helping Fury and stopping stuff away where the Avengers aren't there kind of thing. So um, it's making him out to be a good guy. Who knows if he'll twist or if there's actually he's working them in some way that could come about as well. But as far as we see, he's helping the situation, but I'm we'll still, see. I'm still holding on to my theory that he is the bad guy. True. Um, like he brought all those Titans or the whatever. Elementals. They are, the elementals. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think there's a multiverse. I think that is a red herring. Okay. Um, I think what's, what's really happening is because he's got these abilities, he can mm-hmm. say I'm from another planet. Yeah. Like everybody knows about the snap. The whole world knows that it happened. Yep. Um, if, if it is the, if the multiverse is real, Maybe he went to those other spots, but he, Quentin Beck doesn't know how to do that. Yeah, like in the in the comics. So then they would be drastically changing his origins. Which fine, as long as it works, I could care less. Yeah. Um, even though he's he's a really great villain, mm. I think he's still going to be a villain. I think a lot of what he was saying to Peter in that trailer is in regards to 
how he wishes he could be. Like, I wish I had someone like you. See, so he says something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that uh, the, he's most likely tricking them and saying there's a multiverse mm-hmm. and that he's from there. Yeah. And that, you know, he is a hero and he's come to help wherever he needs to help. Um, but in the trailer, the thing that stood out to me was actually those couple scenes where, uh, which I think someone actually asked us who's going to be the new leader of the Avengers. Mm-hmm. I don't think that this is yeah. going to be the case, but you know, there, there is that void where Iron Man's gone. I think we're all going to Who's going to be it. the next Iron Man? Yeah. yeah. And uh, and I think the other thing, too, is that, you know, there was re- some really good scenes where he, you could tell, like, he's in tears and he's yeah. crying. And, and he's ev- and Iron Man's everywhere. Yeah. You know? And for a kid that didn't have a father, and this was the closest thing to a father figure, like, yeah. that's a big thing. Yeah. You know? So I, that's, that's some... Yeah. More heavy nice, scenes. Uh, the the funny joke between like how he ghosted Nick Fury and like just went to bed. oh yeah no, that's like was great. you don't do that Nick Fury because <laughs> yeah, he didn't want to talk to Nick. Well, Fury. exactly. It's that's awesome. There's gonna be a good humor. There's gonna be that emotion mm-hmm. and the, the action, of course. And yep. we'll see how he progresses his story and the dynamics and stuff. What do you think about my, my multiverse theory? I feel like I've heard people say it too, where they don't think it's real, and I. Mm-hmm. I don't know because it makes sense because if they're going to introduce the X Men, it makes sense for them to come from the, from the multiverse. Are you saying just, that because they've been like, "Well, where have you guys been this whole time?" Yeah, like, okay. just like in terms of story, I feel like that makes the most sense to introduce them. Mm-hmm. But I also do see your point where it's like also very likely that he's just pulling it out of his ass mm-hmm. yeah. because you know if he was here the whole time, why the hell wasn't he you know like doing this shit before? Yeah, for sure. That's always been an a, an argument. I mean, that was my Captain Marvel argument. It's like, where was she when a hole was torn in? earth like you'd think that would be like that's a tough part when you introduce characters later on because then you're yeah. thinking like depending on how powerful they are the hell were you this whole time yeah and there's also the question that if the snap caused a multiverse to whatever mm-hmm. why wouldn't the original one do that yeah and then why did it only happen the second time yeah yeah so i don't know i i actually 50 50 like i have no idea how it could go i could see both sides i hope it's the multiverse just because it mm-hmm. would open the door for the x-men and make more sense to introduce them that way yeah rather than just kind of coming out of nowhere i mean they could be hiding underground i guess or some shit like that but i i don't i don't see the x-men really having an impact on what's going on right now mcu, um, stuff, MCU yeah. stuff i think they're gonna like table them for years later it's gonna take some very clever mapping on how they introduce a lot of this and without like say I don't know how much like the, is it's probably the writers that maybe mapped this out, but then the Russos who were doing the eleven movie or the twenty two movie stretch for how many years they mapped out how they wanted everything to go, kind of thing, right? Up until Endgame. Up, up until uh, Endgame. Uh, after so that, now, so now it's like they, they now didn't. it's potentially up in the air if they have certain writers or Kevin mm-hmm. Feige is obviously going to still be a part of it. Also, he's going to help map that out in the correct way, and it it'll be interesting. And the tough thing is again, technically Spider Man's on loan. But he's hardcore MCU now, and he's basically going to be. They're ba- what the what the trailer showed us is that you're going to need to step up as the new Iron Man, basically. Which do you think that he would be the one? Like, so is it Iron Man in essence, or Iron Man in overall? Like, uh, so sorry, what I mean by essence, Iron Man in the movies where he's going to be the new Iron Man. Yeah. Or is it going to is it more Iron Man in a um meta way where we're going to be following Peter Parker like we were following Iron Man. He I was hope a so. through line in Probably. all Probably. That seems to make the most sense. Out of all the Marvel characters I'd like to follow in the MCU, Spider-Man is on top of that list. So yeah, He is, eh? I also see him leading the Avengers, though. Like, he, Captain Marvel, like, uh, to have a female lead a team is a good thing. But I feel like it feels very forced, especially with the scene in Endgame. That one scene that I've talked to many people about, and they all say that's the one scene they disliked because it was just so forced. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where they're getting the gauntlet, and they all like she's not al- or whatever, she's not alone. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like in Infinity the War, they, Force, yeah. Infinity War, they did the same thing. Yeah. But like with Scarlet Witch, like you know, oh she's not alone, and then mm-hmm. black. That was a that yeah. was a great. Scene. But that made sense because it didn't feel so forced down your throat. But this one. Just felt so forced, and I feel I, like I that, didn't that see goes, it. I didn't see it, it wasn't forced. It wasn't forced. It, listen, at the end of the day, a lot of. Uh, fan service was done in this movie and it didn't sacrifice too much of what they were trying to do and at the end of the day it was a very small thing i didn't just um, like it but i just thought like yeah it felt too forced like it could have been done more naturally they, need, some they needed like that, that plug. I mean, like captain that marvel plug. didn't need their help like she was blo- like flowing no. flying through ships like yeah. not really i, I like, think it was more so listen black widow sacrificed herself for the team so and it was an ode to her but it was like look at what black widow started 
Like, look at how we were able to take, yeah. you know, Black Widow, our only female character, and then develop all these other ones, a yeah. few aside, that are powerful, intelligent, mm-hmm. well written, have great stories behind them. Yeah. Uh, everything like it, it's you know the we got the whole package here kind yeah. of thing right so um yeah there was but look at it this way there was definitely I, some some you know yeah here's this and here's that or whatever like they because we i don't know i don't know how to explain it from what i've read and the future of the mcu they basically made it seem like between spider-man mm-hmm. taking on the iron man persona and like you said the in essence uh Captain Marvel's there to take on the essence of Thor while he's doing what he's doing for now. Don't say that ever again. Ever again. I'm just telling you what I've been reading, and this is what they're hinting, because <laughs> basically they said anyone that grabbed the Infinity Gauntlet is the one to be this to help lead. They kind of saw so Hawkeye. See, I saw that too. So yeah. Black, Black Panther is another one who's yeah. going to basically take the form of the Captain America is essence. Even but though that's if, Falcon. But we're talking in the sense of leading the MCU. They're going to have their own thing. It's. I'm just telling you what, if you're talking about the next big three. This is what he re- you read. This. this is what I read. Yeah, so I'm, not, like, I'm not, I'm just, it's not yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, what I've read. I just, I just find a few holes in it, but go True. ahead. True. But ahead. I'm just telling you, this is, they said, okay, those who grab the gauntlet are going to be part of leading the MCU. So you have the Black Panther who has that, you know, the serum like Captain America had. So he's gonna be that extra human. You have Spider Man with the with the tech. He's a uh-huh. smart kid at the end of the day, actually. So he's not as genius as Shuri, though. No, Shuri is sure Shuri he isn't. Shuri must be the smartest person in the MCU, potentially, is what they've been hinting at too. And then Captain Marvel being the OP character that has come to light, mm-hmm. where that's where Thor was, mm-hmm. realistically. Mm-hmm. Because so that's that's what I'm saying. The big three that they introduced. So Hawkeye moved up to Black Widow spot. Well, Bl- Hawkeye's yeah. done. I Hawkeye's mean, retired. He's going to retire. Yeah. He's not going to keep. Going. He's going to train that Kate Bishop. Yeah, and which and apparently they bring Kate Bishop. They in. shot apparently an end scene with the uh, was it Catherine? Morgan. Yeah, yeah, from Thirteen Reasons Why. Yeah, and so she's supposed to take on the persona of Kate Bishop and be no, the that's, Hawkeye. That's Morgan. Morgan. Yeah, is that what it does? Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, just double that. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how that tracks if. Um, Theories, that's all it is. Honestly, so, yeah. I feel like Spider-Man Far From Home is going to clear up a lot of this shit. And really, ah, really. I think it'll be up. a nice epilogue. I was yeah. against it when you told me because I was like, well, no, this should end with Endgame. But it seems like, you know, it might be a nice epilogue to the whole thing. Well, I feel thing. like if they really ended things with Endgame, it'd be too messy. Like Endgame kind of like ended on that one scene. I don't care. You know, if you haven't seen Endgame by now, well, honestly. The spoiler ban is lifted. Yeah. So. My page, I post facts, spoiler warnings here. You know, if you guys watch, I assume the like, hardcore fans actually watch this. My normal yeah. followers, fucking barely any of you guys do. So when Tony Stark died, I feel like if they were really to like kind of like close it out that way and kind of like mm-hmm. show what happened afterwards, yeah. it would right. just be messy and wouldn't really like have as big of an impact on like, you know, I love you 3000 and that's when the movie ends. So. Yeah. So I feel like Far From Home, like just dragging it out one more movie just so it's more clean is yeah. not bad thing. It's more of the picking up after we left off, mm-hmm. which is uh, my segue into what didn't really happen in this last episode of Game of Thrones called The Last Starks for some unknown reason. Was that actually the title? Yeah, The Last oh. of the Starks. The Last of the Starks. We have some common so but with Far From Home. Oh, okay. Also, we it. have a lot of Game of Thrones ones, which I'll okay. come back to later because yeah, they yeah. were... I like the chat. The chat's the chat's active the tonight. The chat tonight is great. We've had at least ten people on the whole time. So Aaron's hype for Spider Man and John Wick. Dicuno says tickets are out now mm-hmm. for Far From Home. Uh do do do. Is it possible that Iron Man is the other universe in the new Spider Man? Is in the other universe. Yeah. And yes. S- someone had mentioned that I, well, if if this other universe exists, I don't think this is where I don't think the multiverse should work because then what is there another cap running around another Iron Man and all that stuff? Well, if it's already been shown, right? So. Right, but I, I think if they do, well, do that... well, that's a timeline, not well, that's time travel. Yeah. I think if that happens, it takes away what we experience in Endgame. It completely removes that. I don't want to see RDJ anymore. I don't want to hear him. No. I don't want to see Cap or anything because that makes what happened to them lesser, in my opinion. I also heard a theory that uh, Robert Downey Jr. will be the next Jarvis. But he hasn't signed a contract, and I doubt he will. And honestly, yeah. for him to be the next Jarvis, it's kind of like his death is his death is meaningless because mm-hmm. he's still there. Mm-hmm. So I feel like nah. I don't want that to be a thing. Uh, let's see. Robert Downey Jr. says he's done playing Iron Man, which we know. Uh, yeah. Somebody says Detective Pikachu was a nine out of ten. I've oh. been I've been seeing nothing but like outstanding tweets from people. Well, they've already seen it today. Uh, Aaron said, "I love Guardians and totally agree. Thor would take away from the original group." Uh, 
Somebody said, what happened between Age of Ultron and Endgame that made Captain America worthy to lift the hammer? I posted a fact on it. Go check it out. I think it was he, literally everything he's done. The well, reason it's just that, he could he could lift it in the Age of Ultron, but he just didn't. He chose not well, to. No, no, no. He didn't he choose just didn't, not to. Well, that's what. He this is what. He uh, able to. Joss Whedon says he could do it. He just didn't want to embarrass Thor. See, that's from the comics, actually, too. Not, not necessarily. There's a theory that because he was hiding Tony Stark's parents' death to him, that's why he couldn't lift it. Yeah. I've, but Joss Whedon himself said it, guys. So your theory is ab absolute, absolute, absolute. obsolete. I, I don't know if that uh, if that tracks. Well, um, it's just like the thing they tried to tell us that the Hulk was scared in Infinity War. I'm not buying it. I don't care who says it. Well, they didn't I say still did. they didn't say that was just a theory. But apparently, they said it's just he's tired of like yeah, being called Hulk, in all the time. Yeah, whatever. No, but the apparently the directors came out and said it. Wasn't I, the Russos that said? I could have sworn they said down. no because I was a, I believe it was a theory because I thought that too. But they said oh, okay. no it was because he just didn't want to get kept getting called on all the time to okay. like save the yeah, day. Yeah, whatever. So apparently Gunn says that Guardians of Galaxy 3 will be the last time this lineup is together. Oh. From D. Cunios. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to see Scooby-Doo Zombie Land or Zombie Island because Probably nobody not. watches Scooby-Doo animated movies anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so it's somebody heard Nick bag. Fury could be MJ's uncle. Mm-hmm. Most, uncle. And I'm we got sorry. some in chat. Okay, now we're into Game of Thrones comments. So let's just go into Game of Thrones. Okay. okay. Um, first of all, I'm going to start off with this. Okay. Sorry. No. Did you guys like the episode? Yes and no. Yes and no. Eh. I thought it was like a filler. I don't understand. Of course it's a filler, yeah. I don't understand. Why do you have to treat Ghost like such shit? Like... (laughs) I think it's just fan service. I've never grown up with pets. It was anti fan service, actually. It was, it, no, no, I feel like <laughs> just it was too, seen. I feel like it was it was literally too late a... to add them into the show, so they just kind of like no, no, threw no, no, in no, no, scenes. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. They couldn't. Like the, the poor dire wolf. Yeah. Had his fucking half his ear off, bleeding, on the side, like just sitting there, like, "Hey, man, I kind of went in for you. Mm-hmm. I've been around for a long time." And they didn't even have it in their quote their budget to have him walk up and at yeah. least address. Spoilers for Red Dead Redemption: My horse gets shot at the final, like the final ten minutes of the thing, and even Arthur Morgan goes over while he's wheezing from. I think he had tuberculosis. He's dying, mm-hmm. and he still had time to go over, pet his horse, and thank him. I teared up, and it was beautiful. And you're telling me. You're gonna give a head nod to your dire wolf. Just triggered. That's just a, that's uh, just a thing John for Wick. Me. <laughs> that's just oh a yes. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, th- I'm gonna start it like that. All right. But wh- okay, uh, where else can we go? Uh, do we? Okay, go are order. we gonna do a? I like going in order because we can cover. No, no, I get it. But then what happens is we end up just like what? Okay, we'll go in order. The funeral. Yes. They, those were a lot of really mm. organized pyres that they got together. Very much so. Uh, beautiful sequence with Daenerys and um, Jorah. Jorah. Yeah. I felt that Daenerys this episode had more acting range. They yep. were they gave Amelia Clark more things to work with emotionally than they have for seasons. Yeah. Since Drogo, uh, uh, Drago. Drago died. Cal Drogo died. Not Sorry. Ivan Drago. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking of Drago. Um, <laughs> since he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this was this was the in terms of acting this was her best uh, episode in a, yeah. in, in a very long time. Um, we have that for some reason they decided uh, we have nobody else for John so we're just gonna throw Liana Mormont in front of you. Ed, and then uh, Sam with Ed. Was it Sam with Ed? Sam was with okay. Ed. So that's fair because like Liana Mormont like was always having his back and up until he gave up his crown and that kind of stuff. So for it's sure. Like, he she was kind giving of him the gears, the business. Exactly. So he's like he respected her quite a bit. And mm-hmm. she's the one who basically crowned him king in essence, right? Yeah. So yeah, he was a lot there. So it made sense why he went with her, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. And then Sansa with Theon. Sansa with Theon. That, that was, was really expected nice. and gave him that little Stark pin. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was nice. Um... Then they burn them all. John yep. has a really big speech. It was really nice. Yeah. Then we get to a party. Yeah. And this was nice. I liked a yeah. lot of what was in. I liked a lot of what was going on with the conversations. People yeah. with like the hound with Gendry and um, the, the Lannisters were together yeah. and all the people were together. But at the same time, it felt very days of our lives because every time someone was talking to somebody else, you have, you a, have a shot to Daenerys. Yes. And she was looking at. Pulling a like brand start, just staring at people. Yeah. Well, it wasn't just the dinner. She was the most focal for stares and looks sure. and stuff like that. But they, 
I was reading, I was watching the inside the episode uh, on uh, YouTube and stuff like that. And like, that was probably one of the most difficult scenes because they have all their main characters. People are having conversations with other people. So you got to focus on one. You're talking but, technically. Right. I'm just. I'm not. Take technical out of the way. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying in terms of what's going on with our characters. Okay. You know? And so there was a lot of that, like, oh, he's talking to that person and I'm going to. They're going to hold and stare at him for a bit mm-hmm. to make to create drama with everything because Daenerys is seeing like I've sacrificed my armies and my dragon and all yep. that shit. Well, not this, the other one yet, but I've sacrificed a lot and you guys mm-hmm. still don't care about me. Yep. You know, and they're Gendry's looking for Arya. Um, and then she makes him the king of what is this place? What's Storm? Storm's End where Dragonstone is. Uh-huh. That's where the Baratheons were always for forever that's where their their home is kind of okay. thing okay okay so okay. after the like the targaryens took over that's where the baratheons got and that was go. such a pr move by the way it was like the way she, she was like she was, oh, yeah. out, and then she was like, in her role and, like, nobody right gave a fuck anyway yeah. after the news yeah. she kind of sat there like oh also she's not queen of anything so i don't even think she can do that i think it's more so like listen um, it the, amongst that group they call is. her queen so she has every right to do it now because that's that's what it is. But I I can't give you agency over somebody else's thing when I don't control that thing. It's yet. like a check though. It like don't cash matter, it in yeah. now, but yeah, like do it in a bit. Yeah, that's yeah. how it always works. We're gonna give you this when I take over because they assume they're gonna win. So it's not to the say that she can't do it. She can. Based in that group, they all call her queen, more or less, whatever. Yeah. And so she can legitimize him, and go on from there. So who told her? That he was a Baratheon because I'm well, last I heard John probably. Okay, assume that happened. Okay, just they never had a scene. She just happened to know that he was a Baratheon, and just, unless Davos. Well, told I assume him, people would be talking about it. Tyrion. Yeah, but the only person that he's ever said it to ever was uh, was Davos. I think when well, he Davos sent him already off. knew. Yeah, and da- then Arya when. Uh, but John knows too. Does he? he? Told, yeah, because he told well, him we at never the cave. saw that fucking scene where he told him about. Like, I just remember, I didn't remember a lot about the episode. Sorry, that yeah. I'm jumping ahead, but like it's okay. It was a very forgettable episode. Yeah, they never they were having that scene where he's gonna tell him about his true name, mm-hmm. and they actually never showed. It. I thought they were gonna come back to it, and I just remembered that now that they never actually no. fucking did. There, it. There's a lot of stuff that yeah, they're yeah, not yeah, doing yeah. right now. They sh- they're shooting the season very poorly. I guess a lot of things are confusing. They're Listen, rushing it. I that's think they why. needed ten episodes, and, and the I th- last five an hour and a half. Get your first five with filler, and, or not filler, but. But the problem with putting everything in one is the movie problem where it's like we only have a certain amount of time to fill yeah, yeah. to add stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. They decided to do just the 10, the seven episodes or they should have just done 10. Yep. Um, and, and you really notice yeah, even it because eight, they even, could have gone away with it. Maybe. Sure. Because then what I was going with before of not explaining things or sorry, mm-hmm. we were talking about explaining things and then something that doesn't explain everything literally after the fact Sorry, after the long night, nothing happened. Oh, I didn't really have that. Okay. Oh, questions. Um, yeah. Literally, no one has mentioned anything after. Bran is useless now, and it's seemingly he has been useless this whole time. Mm-hmm. This whole issue with the, um, the Night King going out like a bitch, mm-hmm. I'll put it that way. Um, really shattered expectation. Expect. Fuck me. Why can't I talk? You, you know what? We had actually had a discussion on this on Monday. Your humor is lacking, and it's gone honestly, downhill. I think it's your execution. Honestly, man, anything. like I've been talking a lot the past couple days. I tried for MC, and I'm just like out. I was witty as fuck, and I'm just tired of talking. So you're using all your wittiness on something superfluous. I'm grad MC now, so I guess it worked. It's one. It's a. It's a high school graduation. So I can plug it, entertain facts. Unbelievable <laughs> for four hours. Anyways. And so no one mentions anything about the Night King at all. What does anything mean? What does this Lord of Light stuff? Why was this? Why did a ghost come out of Melisandre's like business? No one down knows there? that though. No, I know, but I'm saying is like, are you saying in the past? There's season? nothing like this whole long night that they've been building to, which is the issue I had last week, means nothing. There's so many things that they introduce, and my thing is this: mm-hmm. don't introduce something because you have to deliver on it. So if they never introduced a lot of this stuff, it wouldn't have happened. Case in point, the whole Jamie and Brienne doing it, didn't really care for it. I felt their relationship was stronger when it was him respecting her because he knighted her. And they didn't have to have this thing where, like, they just had to get together. It seemed very, like, forced and we're going to just throw this there. Even though Tyrion's a pretty good wingman. 
because yeah. he blocked Torment, who cried and then was over it with for about five minutes. Yeah. Like there was some good stuff in there. Mm-hmm. The Torment with John, they're all like cheering him on, and Daenerys is just like looking, and she's not, she's unhappy with what's going on, rightfully so, because he's there like, oh, he rode a dragon. It's like, well, I rode a dragon. They were my dragons. And they just kind of kept doubling down and doubling down. Calling him king and all yeah. this. Like, so there's like his drunken pals and like she's in the corner. Which that part was great. Yeah. The thing is, this had some of the better Game of Thrones, like traditional Game of Thrones moments. Yeah. But it wasn't weaved together in a classic Game of Thrones way. Mm-hmm. Um, another case in point would be Braun. Yeah, how the fuck did Braun show up? Was mm-hmm. he just waiting on a hill for a while? Like he just happened. Oh, to show they got up the at... bow and arrow. Case. Yeah. yeah. So Braun shows up while, like, what did you say? Hey, we're the Lannister boys. Oh, they're in that uh, little question, shed over there. Question for you: Do you think the Lannisters were still in Winterfell, like in Winterfell, or were they at the tavern, like in the town outside of it? You mean Tyrion and Jaime? Tyrion and Jaime were they having a drink like... in Winterfell, or was yeah. it? Okay, I don't know. For whatever reason, I have in my head that they were like in the the pub in the town nearby. They decided. I don't think there's a town nearby with a pub. Is there not? I don't think Winter so. Town, the one. So You're, the one. I don't know. You know the stuff better than I do. Well, when they walk in in the in the first episode <laughs> in season eight, they pass a little town right before. I don't know. Maybe they were there. I don't know. It just seems odd that Braun could easily weasel his way. And I mean, Braun is who he is, I guess you could say. But at the same token, to get into Winterfell, find exactly where they are and go in and threaten them and do his yeah. thing and then peace out. Well, and, and this is where. So how he got there, who knows? But when he was there, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like he was threatening them. He was being classic Braun, taking yeah. care of himself. They gave him High Garden or supposedly High Garden. Just like Daenerys gave him this, like nothing's happened yet or whatever. But yeah. does it really matter how he got there? Yeah. Because like it's wouldn't be like more as a, like better as a surprise to see him there. Like in Endgame, if you saw Captain America get up and walk towards Thor Hammer, yeah. it'd be like, oh, that's you cool. Thor's Hammer. What did I say? Did, Thor did Hammer. We, I don't think we saw Bronn since season, episode one. Since, since the first episode where so he like, gave So like I'm yeah. just saying like it'd be more like, it's just more cool, I guess, to see it happen surprisingly than see him yeah. like, hey, where are the Lannisters? Oh, they're over there. Okay, cool. See you, you later. You know what's more surprisingly? In that first episode, actually seeing Jamie show up in Winterfell and how he got from Outside, one part to yeah. the other. Because these guys just got ransacked, and they're just going to let some random person in w- yeah. with a giant crossbow. Like, those are the things that are kind of like, he just shows up for no reason. That The Thor hammer thing, that was in a situation where Thor was actually getting, was dying. Okay, and so that makes more sense because guess what? He was already on the battlefield. It'd be different if Thor was, I don't know, in Wyoming and this whole battle's happening at Avengers thing. And then all of a sudden the hammer lifts up and there's there's Captain America. Sorry, did I say Thor twice? I don't know. Anyways, I think if, if Cap was in Wyoming and then all of a sudden he just deus ex machina right into the middle he of the battle. Saying, he said Cap again. I said Cap. Yeah, I'm saying Cap. I don't know. I don't know either. He's saying. I get his point. He, he's I don't trying really, to. Com- I, he's trying to compare that. Okay. I'm just, I just think it doesn't Cap. matter to him, like going to ask where they are. No, it does because that's Maybe the he's laziness. For them. No, that's the laziness of the show. Yeah. But to be they, fair, they don't have time to do this shit. Like with Night King, they don't have time to fucking sit and talk about him. Which is the whole issue with this entire. I'm not saying season. it's a good thing. I'm just saying yeah. they don't have. They simply don't have yeah, that time. I get that. But all I'm saying to to your cap and like hammer thing if he was in another place altogether then he showed up then he'd be like where the fuck was he but if you knew cap was on the way because he said he was on the way in episode one so if you knew cap was on the way to wyoming okay so where was he stationed while this whole battle of winterfell was happening then the well, question keep saying cap sorry bro i don't know he said thor was somewhere else and cap no, was I going said, to him i said cap was somewhere else oh. and you mentioned thor's Jesus. hammer I don't understand your analogy. I don't know, man. Just You're the leave, one that brought it up. Leave, leave the was, whole Thor thing aside, he's please. He's the one that brought it up. Okay, I'm just telling you. It's like getting ridiculous. Anyways, Anyways go if, on. If Wyoming. They showed, if they showed him at the end of a, another M episode being by Winterfell or like the questions that arise are this. Where were you when this whole battle was going on? Where Did you just on happen to get there in time? But How if you long saw the battle, you would you it? go down and join in the He's fight? He's also coming no, from the south and that thing was happening in the listen, north. Listen, I, I get that, but you would obviously notice that there's this giant million person fight going on in this small castle. Yeah. You're going to notice that, yes. right? So the questions in my mind as someone that's working out the logistics, how did A get to B when you've got all these other things going on? But the battle So then also, he just thing? showed up after. The battle happened at night though, like would he travel at night or would he be sleeping? I don't know, he happened to be there at night. 
the next night. But if you show up, it's different than like you show up at that time and you yeah. go and you sit there so at night. Rather than probably like, on his so way. Then, so then, uh, so then what you're saying is that he waited until at night and then someone at the gate just let this dude with a crossbow come through after they literally just well, got attacked. Well, wouldn't the defenses be like the castle's kind of broken? Couldn't he just sneak in? I guess so. Like they're all celebrating, but they will be on like high like defense. It's not out of the realm of possibility. He snuck in. He no, did it was it was super convenient. But this well, is, what else are they going to do? But this is my point to <laughs> okay. how, what they've done is they've set up these things mm-hmm. and they're doing a terrible job of executing them. Okay. They set up the Night King for seasons. Terrible job of getting rid of them. And now it literally means nothing because no one's even going to talk about it. And I'm saying talk about it as in let's have some in, some let's get some of our questions answered. Right. Instead of showing Jamie banging Brienne twice, because now they're sleeping. I don't know. They all survived. The last thing they want to do is sit and reminisce about their impending death. That reminiscing is one thing. Okay, but having Bran actually be useful for once in the entire show is is another thing. Well, he told Tyrion about his freaking chair that came from Aegon Targaryen's. or one of the Targaryens guys, yeah. <laughs> but he's not going to tell him about. Hey, what? By the way, you, but watch out for this shit. So, yeah. we're just playing devil's advocate. I'm just playing devil's yeah. advocate. No, honestly, I, I, I yeah, know you I are. Agree. I know you are. And and that's the problem is is that when you have to do that, this is the same thing we talked about. We've talked about this on many things. Like if if you can't make it work and it doesn't make sense, then there are going to be questions about that. Um, where else do we go from there? Have you seen the episode again? I was just about to watch it before I never had time, though, unfortunately. But, yeah. So, we were talking about how they were talking. They just had sex. So, what's after? Oh, no. The crossbow. Obviously, that's how this whole thing started. The so, crossbow. what happened after the crossbow? Great scene. Okay. Their conversation, great. I like Good. that. But the before and after, it's like... Danny and John in the yes. room. They have their little moment where, like, you know, they finally have a moment alone. Mm-hmm. They get back lovey-dovey and... She starts in it again mm-hmm. about what are we going to do about your thing mm-hmm. and goes into it like he doesn't care. He still loves her regardless of him being like her being his aunt. And he has that moment of clarity a little bit, but it's more so her being like just stuck on the whole thing. You can't tell anybody you can't do this. And it's like it doesn't matter. And he's like, I have to tell my sisters mm-hmm. and go on from there. But because yeah. he thinks everything's great. Yeah. Or everything's going to be great. Well, which it, really she can't let it go and let it be what it'll be. And he's just trying to move on with it. And it's like, I still care about you. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter what we are or what this is. It's like, I care about you. But she's like, no, I care about you not saying a shit and me maintaining my title. She's very controlling. Very much so. Well, and, and that's what they, they've turned John into a puppy in and, in and of, its, yeah. of himself. Like, he's just turned into this little puppy. Like just call him a bitch. He's a bitch. Him. He's a bitch. Yeah. They've turned Jon Snow into a bitch. Oh, and it's even more apparent later on when they're having the little talk about what to do next kind of yeah. thing. Right? So um, I loved the fact that Arya told Gendry, like, no, that's not no. me. Oh, yeah, there was that too. I thought that was great. I, I thought that was a really nice scene. It would have like made sense for her character. Back. I like that. Well, that's, again, that's a great point. It's like because watching Batman so have many, sex. It just, it's just not pleasant to watch. But they're showing, they're showing so many things happening yeah. that aren't to character. And some things that are. Yeah. But I really felt this episode, they doubled down on, let's really hint at her being the Night Queen. Or the, the Mad Queen, sorry. Not the yeah, Night yeah, Queen. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, there was some uh, uh, Michelle Boyd from Fandom. Uh, it's a YouTube channel. It's like mm-hmm, a subsidy mm-hmm. of Screen Junkies. She was talking about how I, she's like, I think the show has gotten to a point, she said, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, where we're expecting other things and they're literally telling us. Because in that episode before the battle, too. we only have a minute 10 on the live. So sorry if uh, we lose you in about a minute 10. She's like, I'll try to answer those um, questions. <laughs> yeah. In, in the other one, oh, or in that second episode for the good ones Tyrion literally says I think we're going to survive and guess what they survive yeah like there's so many things that they're literally telling us but we're trying to find more into it because guess Mm -hmm. what the show used to be like that and it's not anymore yeah um but yeah the the whole Danny and John thing was kind of frustrating the Arya thing was great I didn't care that Brienne and Jamie uh, got together uh, even though mm-hmm. it was, you know, nice to see that Brienne finally is no longer a virgin. Yeah. And apparently Pod was a virgin. Yeah, he drank after. But yeah. then he like he went after those two girls. So right. it's like yeah. okay. <laughs> um and then Tormund found a girl after he got over the Brienne In thing. the end, yeah. Um what else? Kate, the hound didn't get there. a girl. No, the, the hound, hound doesn't want never. a girl. The hound's funny. I hated the fact hated, hated the scene. We finally get John. 
Bye, everybody on the live show. Uh, everybody listening right now, we're still going. We're just saying bye to the Instagram live. We have six seconds left. 239 viewers? Holy shit. Endgame. It's popping, just like last year. Popping. Okay, now we're yeah. in. The, That's high. We've got like 160. Yeah. That's actually like That's a crazy massive number. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Oh, but the, now we're in our chill zone. Yeah, Everybody, yeah. if you feel the mood changing, that's because we're relaxing. Um, anyways. Go on. Um, why the hell wouldn't they at least let us see here John tell, sorry, let us see John tell Arya and Sansa who yeah. he is. And let's see their reaction. That one really pissed me off. But I. <laughs> what a garbage move to do. Like, yeah. This is what makes me believe, like, this is where, because the one guy actually wrote on Wolverine Origins, I think we mm-hmm. talked about this, and yeah. so he's partly responsible for closing Deadpool's mouth. Yeah. I'm like, this is you. Like, this is this is the stupid things that you do, thinking that we're going to subvert expectations. This is how dumb you guys have become. Quite honestly, some of the best scenes that have happened in this season, for me, personally, is when his origins have been revealed, because they've done it in a really good way, with Sam in the first episode. And then John gave, told Danny in the third episode. It was great. And then even go back to the last season, how they mm-hmm. ended it, where John and or, uh, Sam and Bran figured it out. Sure. Bran, yeah. And Bran's now, the bronze. Bran's the bronze. And now they kind of, we lost another good opportunity for a great scene of his lineage being released. And at the end of the day, Game of Thrones is kind of more so about John. Like he's like you he's have like the Iron the Throne. Character. He's a the next main character for sure. Mm-hmm. His whole lineage, the whole history behind what happened was just like it fueled everything and why everything's happened the way it's happened. Well, to because be fair, of that that whole thing sparked the Robert the Robert's rebellion. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The other thing I disliked about that scene was the fact. Well, You're not only it so it's facing you. I'm like talking to the side of the. Thing. Not only the fact that they didn't show the scene. But the fact that the follow of the scene didn't really matter. They just had, like, nothing resting bitch face, and that was it. But he didn't even say it either. So, first... He let Bran say it. He let Bran say it. And then there was that thing where it was like, Bran said something else. Like, there, there was that weird thing between him and Bran where, you tell him, no, you tell him, no, you tell him. I got to tell you guys something. It was more of a you look, and him. he's basically like, it's, up, it's your choice. It's your thing to say. And also, thing. why wouldn't they believe him? He fucking wrote in on dragons. Like, he wrote a dragon. You'd think they wouldn't believe that. But the thing is, no one's addressed the fact that only a Targaryen can ride a dragon. I forget that. I'm just telling you. I don't even think that Daenerys doesn't even know that. No, no, but I'm just saying nobody knows that. But it looks great that he did it, but they don't know what it actually implies. Right, but that doesn't... I don't think it implies anything. Mm. I I think the show is pretending that it implies something. But what I'm saying is this. You automatically cut from there. Mm -hmm. And wasn't it the scene directly after Arya... On the horse, walking yep. with the hound. Yeah, I am pieced out. What kind of cut was that? Like she just seems like everything's normal. Like she didn't just hear a huge blow—not a blow, but a huge she, revelation. She did hear it. She's just honorable enough to not say anything and just carry on with her mission. And okay. That's it. Uh, you cannot defend it. I did. No, you just can't. now. You, poorly. <laughs> Whatever. Because <laughs> no, but like fight me. <laughs> I'm saying like they, they cut from this thing that you said they've done so well and. For our main character, Did I s- sorry, you said they've done previously so, yeah. sorry, so well. And for our main character, and this yeah. whole thing's about him and stuff, and you're trying to justify them them hearing something huge and then cutting her because I, she's Batman and she's going on to I her didn't mission. justify anything. All I said is what she did, and it's like, it is what it is. I see both sides. Yeah. I see that's in her character not to say anything. I do see how it's stupid, though, how no one actually reacted to True. it. True. Well, we never got to see it. Well, not even just outside. It's the way, like... Maybe their body, like, Her. language, the way they kind of talk or, like, look. Like, not, like, look shocked or kind of, like... Have a scene. Like, have a see what's going on. Like, let us see this. Because, yes, I get when she's walking with him, she's not going to say anything because she promised. And well, she and she's, she's just taking it all in. She's thinking. She's breaking the conversation, having him, like, what are you going to do and this and that. But and I can't justify the fact that they didn't show the scene. I true. can't imagine... I don't justify that at all. What the pros are okay. for I not showing it. No, that, man. That. I told you I didn't like that. I just... like Because they did such a good job before. This was a fail. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is the fact that Aya decided to peace out, kept her mouth shut. That is what it is. We we didn't get the scene. It sucks. What happens after speaks obviously to the characters, and they stay true to that. That's the one thing you can say. At least they stay true to most of their characters, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Especially now with that information. So Aya, 
Stone Cold, she's kind of just drinking it all in, and she goes to side to join the Hound wherever he might be going. Well, she was but going. She was, was it going her anyway. First, and then the Hound. No, or Hound she... was already heading, and she happened yeah. to be catching up to him. He's like, "Oh, where are you going?" King's Landing. He's like, "Oh, me too. I got unfinished business. So do I." Kind of thing. Let's share the road like we used to. Well, I liked that scene a lot because oh, it was great. It's they always have... great seeing those two together. Like oh, those two yeah. have great chemistry on screen. And Arya is not coming back. As, at Probably least that's not. what she said. Yeah. So she's probably going to die. Yeah. I think. Well, maybe. Um, or she's going to maybe kill Cersei. And I then, assume that's where she's going. And, well, well, I know, that's, that, I know that's where she's going, but I'm saying kill her and then kind of go off and do on her own adventures. Probably. Like the adventures of Arya, right? That's a spinoff show. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sansa on the do rampart. Do you think Sansa told Tyrion, so it starts like, so the way that they showed in the show at least from what I remember, she said it at the end, right? What if there's another? Yeah. Okay. I It didn't feel to me that she was already intending to tell him, and she kind of told him last minute. Yeah. But her telling him was then it's intentional, and also she can't keep a secret, Yeah. to make sure, to try to plant this seed to ruin Daenerys' thing underneath. Well, here she already doesn't like her, obviously. So... Maybe she wasn't intending to, but she was just so distraught by the information. While and then Daener- and then Tyrion on top of it is trying to defend her the whole time, mm-hmm. on top of it. So that just set her off and said like, "Oh yeah, Daenerys is good. Daenerys is good." It's like, well, what if there's actually someone better with the right lineage, which is the whole with the right stuff, right? Exactly. So that's why she probably wasn't initially but because he kept driving it home mm-hmm. that she's good you should give her a chance you should talk to her like blah 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 she's still your queen like he's throwing all that in front of her face and she's like well why have another guy here who could do it too so well, be- and she paused but also yeah. it seemed like a move that like it would be smart for her to do but like because look at what happened after but before we get to that mm-hmm. we get our essentially goodbyes to a lot of these characters. So Tormund's going north. He's saying goodbye to Sam. Like, this is essentially, I think, the show being like, say bye to these guys, because this is the last time we're ever going to see them again. I honestly think that's what the case is. Very possible. And he completely just ghosts ghost. Mm -hmm. And that really bugged me, because they have been really screwing with him, and these direwolves are supposed to be mythic creatures, dragon-level mythic creatures. Yeah. Like, not obviously it's size, just, but it just felt like, and you look at the poor thing, mm-hmm. and it's half torn apart, Yeah, and he just looks and nods like, come well, on. We haven't really seen Ghost for a very long time. He showed up at the battle out of nowhere, so it was very ridiculous how they went about that. When you remember in season two, I think, mm-hmm. two or three, two, I think, okay. where John goes north again mm-hmm. to kill all the mutineers and stuff like that and he ends up with Ghost again and he comes and he pets him and it's a whole thing that's what you'd expect from this scene I can't imagine money is an issue I'm gonna say that's me too I think think that's that's bullshit 100% I agree with you in in a scene where there wasn't a a dragon and actually that whole episode you didn't see a dragon until the end realistically yep None of the dragons were out during the funeral thing, I think. They and were I doing be- their own thing. And I so, bet you they saved a shit ton of money for making everything super dark and foggy the episode before. Because you can. So, That's how you cheat on CGI. That's how Venom got away with it. Yeah. As much as the director tried to say, oh, it's it's a strong scene. It not He didn't... He said, like, yes, everyone wanted the interaction to, like, physically. But he said it also... The, the interaction with the CG uh, ghost that was difficult. I don't know. He used an excuse. I think it's bullshit. It is. And he could have easily just gone, boy, go with Tormund, have fun kind yeah. of thing. Um, yeah. It was really dumb how they did that part, for sure. Um, cut to Dragonstone. So he says bye to everyone. Yeah. Sa- uh, Gilly's pregnant again or whatever. Are we yeah. in Dragonstone yet? Oh, might as well. I don't know what else happened. I don't in either. between? Yeah. I only saw it the ones. Yeah, they so, team up in Dragonstone. Sorry, boats and dragons. Obviously, the biggest criticism this week is she's so high up in the air. How, did yeah. she, how didn't she see Euron? Yeah. So we get this whole nice flying thing, and they fucked that dragon up. Honestly, like, it's surpri- like it was a surprising move, but oh yeah, the like the what they show like twice in the neck, like that was pretty, that was gruesome. But they're also very good at aiming that thing. I feel like they how were, much practice? but but at yeah. the same token, when D- Danny went to go after them with Drogon, they missed completely. So it's <laughs> yeah. like it yeah. it doesn't make sense sometimes how they do that. And home, oh okay, so that's a, like the Star a, Wars star, a co- a stormtrooper, stormtrooper thing. Trooper a coworker of mine sent me uh, a supercut of. Basically, uh, 
one of the directors, he's like, oh, Danny must have forgot about the Iron Fleet. And it shows every clip about her mentioning the Iron Fleet. Where's Euron? How are we going to destroy him? And then goes back, well, maybe she just forgot about it. Again, another thing. And it's just like, <laughs> how they're literally right in front of your face. How do you not like think about them? You're anyway. so high up. Like, well, not even that. And like, that was a big fleet. Yeah, I, I can't imagine those stones like really hid them very well. And it was clear as day. It made no sense. Yeah. It was really, really poorly done. Well, and, and and this is where it felt like this whole Night King thing and this yeah. were literally just there to get rid of this giant army coming from the east or wherever. Yeah. Um, oh, we did miss the map, the rooms, the map scene the or whatever. Room. This was before John said anything yeah. to Sansa and Arya. Okay. How the hell are half the Dothraki and half of the Unsullied around? Because last I checked, only one of those motherfuckers got back I after they no decided idea. to like Leroy Jenkins themselves Pretty to the much. front lines. And I didn't see half the Unsullied survive. I saw one guy. Wow. Plot armor. Especially when Grey Worm just let them... See you later. Yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of silly. Like, I was looking at this, but then John clearly showing his allegiance to Daenerys. Yeah, when Sansa's bringing up a very smart... Yeah, you guys are freaking tired. You want to give him a few days, Smartest weeks? character. Yeah. And she's like, no. And then, of course, John right away defends her. And then they have, like, the little family. John, can I talk to you in the kitchen, please? <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like... Yeah. I was, like, up in his face, like, what are you doing? Yeah. What is wrong with you? <laughs> It's like slap him. Just in be the cool face. for yeah. once. Just, Just be, be cool. cool. <laughs> um, well, and, and that's the other thing. So the question then, if she did listen to Sansa, then was Euron's ship just going to wait there for two or three days uh, for everyone yeah. to rest up? Pretty much. Like, and he's just like sitting there, like seeing what's happening. Like, what if they went at night? They wouldn't have. Maybe they were all sleeping. Um, anyways, or Bran could have said something. Yep. Bastard. So she does her nose dive. I'm surprised that the ships didn't just start firing on everybody. Like, there was a lot of. Well, they did after. No, no, no. I meant everybody in the position that they were in that sneak attack they could have taken out a lot more ships than just the one well they were focused and, on the dragons let's be honest okay they no but they took the dragon down first sure then they took the ship down okay then somehow they caught Missande, but i know she went down to a skiff to get away or whatever but i still don't know how they got her but there were so many other ships that they could have just tagged and sunk everything i think they, they were all in a row i'm pretty sure her fleet was destroyed no, I think there's a lot more. I, I, they didn't show it. Maybe I was, I, I was very um, confused during that scene how they even got the um, what's her name? Masande. Masande. Yeah, I don't know. Well, either. she went down to the skiff and basically they destroyed every other ship. Everyone was fleeing for their life. They maybe caught her. I don't know. It's not yeah. out of. The, it's not. Yeah, well, it's a not a stretch. Is another boat, so they could have saw her kind of go in the yeah. opposite way and then maybe catching her. But yeah, yeah it's weird. Um, then um, Dragonstone. We're in Dragonstone. And then we finally have, for the first time in, I would say, about a season and a half, a great Game of Thrones scene between Tyrion and Varys. And I believe Varys is dead, probably. Well, he's already, already prophesized. Yeah, and he's going to get burned, was that? He's prophesized he's going to get burned by alive fire, or something yeah. by fire? So it'll be by her dragons, because yeah, she's yeah. going to figure out that he's going to betray her okay. for John because that was the conversation right. with her and Tyrion. Yeah. And she said, and don't ever betray me or something again. Well, and like at the same token, he's, she also said, like, tell me if I'm doing something wrong. He told her, and she's not listening anyway. Yeah. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to stick to my guns, and I go through them. Maybe I got to back Jon Snow, because now it's that line where it says, like, Pearl's like, how many people know? It's like this mm-hmm. and this. It's like, then it's like a secret. It's no longer a secret. Now it's information kind of thing. So it's like... And that's where it goes to my idea yeah. that Sansa actually decided, wait a minute, I can use this information, plant it in him, and then it'll really, fester. really erode the foundation yeah. that Daenerys has built, even though it's Absolutely. already eroding beneath her. Oh, well, yeah. And obviously Varys has shown his allegiance to the realm. And I, I truly believe, actually, Varys serves the realm. He'll, he doesn't care who it is. And he thought for a longest time that, hey, Danny's the one. Yeah. Now, not so much. He's like, you know what? I've tried telling you. You're not listening to me. I'm going to go back this guy. And I have a theory on the, uh, that I read about. And go for it. So the theory potentially is that the Golden Company will betray Cersei on Varys' word mm-hmm. and back Jon Snow. That'd be a game changer. Because the Golden Company, they, they have a, they're saying like, oh, their, their contract's as good as gold. But there's more to it in the books. Apparently, it has something to do with blood. And all these guys are Targaryen bastards. They come from the Blackfire uh, 
lineage, and Blackfire is one of the main Targaryens. If you go into the lore, you'll hear about it a little bit more. But mm-hmm. basically, these guys are also loyal to Targaryens and stuff like that as well. So, well, then they would automatically be more just a Daenerys, anyways, wouldn't they? Based on well, that? no, because John is the more is the true heir, cause right? But the, nobody knows. But they'd still back a Targaryen regardless. Is that how they? Uh, no, not necessarily. I think it'd have to be set up certain different. I, I'm not sure how that would work. But Varys would go and parlay and talk to them and kind of something. Again, very yeah. stretch theory. And there's another one about dragons i'll talk to them later <laughs> uh you can jump in whenever you're yeah, yeah. i'm not gonna lie to you i'm so sorry i totally zoned out during that whole conversation cool, cool. i figured i saw what that. i said is that there's a theory that i saw on youtube by someone that varus is gonna talk to the golden company somehow through his like little birds yeah. or his little like, birdies his whispers and, and basically tell them to betray cersei and back Jon snow who's a true targaryen kind of thing there's a lot of uh the, the politics of it are definitely coming out For now. Sure. The maneuvering. But that's what made that scene so great, though, mm-hmm. because Varys and Tyrion had some of the greatest conversations next to Littlefinger and pretty much everybody else. Yeah. I miss Littlefinger, man. <laughs> In this entire show. A little bit. Um, and it was it was well written. Mm-hmm. It was well acted. It was like this. This is like we've it's taken us four episodes to get give us something like this right yeah. you've like and i'm sorry like they've definitely dropped the ball hardcore from season seven till now and this is the be- like that you're finally giving us something really yeah. good here um cersei doing some really good maneuvering let's bring everybody behind the thing let's make her look like the psycho because if she kills everybody you guys won't like her anyways yeah good move and i'm glad to see cersei because we haven't seen her for like two episodes it's true. Lush. She's such a great actress in the yeah. show. Like she is awesome. Uh, you She tells Euron that it's her kid. So, I, I, I guess this kid is real. All right. Kyburn gives well, him Kyburn the nod. Kyburn gives him It's true and stuff like that. Whatever. But, uh, but that gets undone by the end because I'm pretty yeah. sure unless he is as stupid as I think he is, he won't pick up on the fact that Tyrion knows about the kid. Well, and that's the thing. It's like how would he know about it already? Exactly. So. Yeah. It, he's got to pick up on them. That was like a very tear in movies. Like he's trying to relate to her. She's like, okay, give this up. Like talk it. But there's no way she was ever going to do it. I yeah. thought she was actually just going to push Masende. Oh, yeah. At or the end with of like the... a noose or something and have her hanging. I thought uh, Tyrion was dead. Oh, I, I thought he was going to get like Potentially. Murdered. There actually, was a close, that, but I don't think. I was think. thinking that too. But uh, her killing Masende, I thought she was going to see you later. I knew she was dead the second they caught her. And 100%. I'm like, good. And this will actually turn Grey Worm because he was scared after seeing the dead, and now yeah. he's not going to be scared anymore, as they showed in that preview. Oh, yeah, um, he'll change. Okay, so she's got her entire castle pretty much lined with those scorpions, which yeah. the scorpion 2.0s, apparently Kyburn got a bunch of them made. Yes, because the first ones weren't as strong, I guess, or yeah, whatever. The, the one that Braun used it to yeah. get whoever. Um, yeah, but uh, you're on the ones on his ship are pretty interesting because they have a four-point spring. I thought they were the same. Uh, no, they have a four-point spring. Uh, because it's like he he's going on his theme of his whole tentacles and stuff like that kind of uh, thing. So he has four that that spring back and yeah. maybe gives a little bit better, uh, better hit whatever. Yeah. But the rest of them look exactly like the first one, but just better, just better. And like you see Drogon in the in the in the way in the back. That's I don't know. Stupid. So whether they could, well, yeah, him being there at all is dumb. Like I don't <laughs> know they could actually hit it from that far. I think they could, but I don't know. I think so because he happened to hit the one from the ship in the mm-hmm. fucking sky. But let's let's say he didn't it was look like, like he was too far away. Well, yeah, but let's say it was like kind of more directly above him versus straight ahead down, like way far. The physics are still the same. So yeah. him shooting it from above, you're still going to have a downward tra- trajectory no matter what happens. Yeah, so yeah. you have to hit your, you have to aim higher to be yeah. able to hit it. And they nailed it in the neck twice and the stomach and all that. It was very accurate, extremely accurate. Where he was stationed, Mm -hmm. it was actually a perfect angle where they wouldn't have to very much. If Ramsey Bolton could strike Rickon with a bow and arrow from that far away, I'm pretty sure these scorpions can hit that dragon, which didn't even look like he was a football field away. Like, why would you bring him? Why would it it just sitting there? There wasn't even like on guard, it's just lying down. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if I was Cersei, straight up, I would have murdered them all right Mm -hmm. then and there. I would have shot that dragon. Because then, so it's if she her. would have murdered everybody there, then maybe the, the she would lose the crowd kind of thing, even yeah. though I don't think she gives a shit anymore. But if she would have taken down the dragon, it's like, I killed the, her dragons. She no longer has dragons. Yeah. So anyways. But she's definitely, little... 
the episode ended with a for sure look at the Mad Queen. Like we're gonna see some crazy shit. Well, and and to be fair, she lost her most trusted advisor in Jora, and Missandei um, second. Well, Missandei was second, but she lost him. Tyrion, she has no idea what's gonna happen, what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was that shot in the trailer for next episode where Tyrion's walking and the dragon in the background is like. His mouth was there. It's just the placement oh, yeah, of yeah. it because it's on the wall. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people are theorizing that he's going to get eaten by a dragon or something mm. or he's going to die by a dragon. Um, she's lost everything. She essentially, yeah. or almost everything, lost another child. child. Um, and now she's, I believe, lost the only other person next to Grey Worm that she can truly trust but actually had as an advisor in Masande. Yeah. And uh, also, I noticed we haven't had a beheading in a long time, so that was something to kind of see from far away. Mm-hmm. That conversation, though, with uh, Tyrion and Kyburn was interesting. Yeah. Kyburn still annoys the piss out of me. I don't know why. I just hate, always Surprising hate Surprising how he rose up, like, like where he came from, almost yeah. dead at Heron Hall, and then yeah. in Rob Stark's army, we're talking like season two. Yeah, yeah. Season two but I mean, three? I just don't, I just, there's something about his character I just don't like. Well, it's just because he's, he's winning. Like no, he, no, no, no. It's, it's not that because yeah. I love Cersei. Yeah, yeah, And technically she is what I would still consider her winning right now. Well, but I, she I, knows how to play the game. I adore Cersei's character mm-hmm. from start to finish. Every little piece of dialogue, every manipulating thing. It's yeah. all. I'm like, yes. Mm-hmm. It's good villains, right? Yeah. Um, But there's something about Kyburn. And then he does his Hail Mary. Let me try to reason with my sister. Again, why are we writing every character not all every character, but why are they making Tyrion stupider and stupider? Yeah, it's very like, surprising. But ever since he got back to Westeros and trying to defeat his family, like he's been just not doing well. <laughs> okay, so but he's already he's already shown that to himself a bunch of times. I think, so why in yeah. this moment does he think he can reason with her? Last like, ditch effort. Yeah, but but he's already done that a couple of times. But again, it's to show that. It was it was a play as well because he kind of knew that she wasn't going to do it regardless of what he thought. But he in his heart, I think he truly knew she wasn't going to do it. But it was to show that he was on behalf of Daenerys that I tried to talk with her, and this is what it is, and this is where Danny's not going to go mad queen. But yeah, that's silly. Um, what are you going to do? So we get that Daenerys walks off, mm-hmm. that's and um, that's the end of the episode. Again, a very meh episode. Filled I'm, with good classic Game of Thrones moments yeah. interweaved into a terrible tapestry. A little bit, yeah. Which goes to show them that the showrunners have no idea what they're doing. They're taking the um, the Ryan Johnson, let's subvert, subvert every single uh, expectation. And by that, they're ruining the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a question on there, which we're already running a little bit over. But um, do you guys think that th- this show has gone from one of the biggest shows? Mm-hmm. To oh also sorry I don't give a shit if a coffee cup was on the Starbucks <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't understand why everyone's making a big ass deal it's funny that shit happens all the time even yeah. in Braveheart a amazing epic there's like a Toyota or something in the background yeah, 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 this yeah. shit happens all the time okay yeah. if you guys are you guys are mad about the the fan base is mad about a Starbucks cup over the fact that John didn't even fucking pet his direwolf fuck off anyways. Um, do you guys feel that if this ends the way that it clearly shows like it's been going, as in it's not being written very well and executed very well, it will ruin the entire series? I mean, not for you, but in general? I think it's a lose-lose because no matter what happens, if uh, the fan theories aren't correct, people are going to hate it either way. Yeah. So, like, myself, like, I'm not very invested in Game of Thrones. Like, I've seen mm-hmm. it, but, like, You're not I don't hardcore. know the names. Like, I don't know any. I don't know anyone's name. I yeah. feel like... I'm Spider Man in Infinity War. He's like, I don't know anyone's names. Yeah. So like, I honestly don't really care like about things. I'm just watching for enjoyment at this point. So mm-hmm. you know, Arya killing the Night King, like hardcore fans, like, oh that's bullshit for me. Like, oh that's cool. You know, I, I like liked Arya. It. I still liked it. Too, I liked right? it a lot. Yeah. But I feel like however it ends, I'm gonna be fine with. Might say like, oh that kind of like you know I didn't like. I thought mm-hmm. it was gonna end differently, but it's it's know. very difficult, and not a lot of shows actually hit the nail on the head to finish off an entire series, except for How I Met Your Mother. Terrible. Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad did a good job, whatever. And Breaking but Bad to me now because this- for Game of Thrones, the problem that's happening with these seasons is it's just that they're go- with the less with their schedule being so more so tight. It just doesn't make sense. Give yourself a few extra episodes. Make them the same length. Have broaden your story. Have some filler stuff because you can have filler. And we'd be more than happy with having it. Like most I of don't- season two and three was filler. Well, exactly. And it was 
well, compelling as hell. But two and three also had build up to the Red Wedding. Season two also had the whole but battle there, at. There at was the more Castle filler Black. in it than True. the other ones, and they but, were exceptional writing. That's why. So I I don't get how they, I they cut like okay even season seven that could have used an extra two episodes. Mm-hmm. This could use another two extra episodes. Mm-hmm. Make them nine. Don't make them tens. And then you know you could have done the whole. Hour, hour and a, hour and five minutes, and then the, the battle scene. Yes, go for the gusto and have that long ass battle and win it, and then come back to a couple of filler episodes and bring it back to war shit. But this condensed schedule is where they're making mistakes. They're they're trying to like, okay, we got to get this, we got to get this, and we got to get this, and so much happening, and you're kind of losing it slightly in some ways, right? I hope they do it justice at the end. We won't know any different until and uh, until or if George R. R. Martin does his version of it all. Mm-hmm. So I and I'm not sure if both like his books and this series have to end the same way, but no, there are certain other events that'll be different, right? So and apparently, like even already, like the Night King apparently wasn't as big in the books as he is in. He doesn't yeah. from from what I understand, he doesn't show up at all. So oh, it was an know. allegory for don't believe in all the hokum that's going on. Like everyone's believing in this long night and this yeah. night king and stuff. Um, and they're like, no, you crazy fools. Like there's a physical throne here. Like you guys are believing in the wrong thing. It was, yeah. I think it was an allegory for religion overall. Like there's real things happening. Mm-hmm. Stop believing in this fake stuff because in the books, again, he doesn't, he's not there. Yeah. Like I think he's mentioned, but I think it's more of just like this thing exists, right? Yeah. Um, where there's this actual Game of Thrones and politics and all that, yeah. from what I understand. But I haven't read them, so I don't know the details yeah. of it. I think they've definitely dropped the ball. Uh, my interest in the show has gone down to very, I don't care. Um, I think it does kind of, it doesn't ruin the entire season, the re- the whole series, because those other seasons still exist. Mm-hmm. But it does lessen the anticipate like it does lessen them quite a bit whereas we talk about endgame that elevates the entire mcu this kind of takes away from it because a lot of stuff that they've mentioned depending on how this ends means nothing and i get that you can build you can put build up some things that don't mean anything but don't make it the focus of a lot of your characters yeah that's where and, and don't subvert expectation for the sake of doing it, because as people that are paid a lot of money to do this stuff. Did I know that Cap was going to carry uh, hold the hammer? Prob- like I had an inkling. I'm like, I wonder if they're going to do that. Like I had it in my mind yeah. and they did it. And it was amazing. They didn't have to subvert my expectations and have Iron Man hold the damn hammer mm-hmm. because I want to see that this is the finale of. I, like as fans, I think we deserve to see certain things. Yeah. Subverting our expectations, and you know what's funny? Because of this season, I hate the Last Jedi more. <laughs> and sorry, I, I I dislike. I just not hate. I dislike a lot of the things that they do, and I now finally understand Star Wars fans and why they were so pissed with the Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. Because I recently watched. I think I watched it like. Uh, week and a half ago or something like that i had in the background and i kept going back and being like well this is stupid this is stupid then the long night happened and i'm like oh yeah i get it now so to all the star wars fans that were yelling at me who were listening that were like you also say you disliked the last jedi though like you weren't a fan of it were you no i i i didn't care i sorry i didn't care enough so i care about star wars the same way you care about game of thrones let's say like it didn't matter to me that much. I was never a huge Star Wars fan. I like the originals, and I'm more so like those movies changed, literally changed the world. Not just the movie world, they changed the world. Hmm. And you like that's what makes it huge. But I've never been a huge Star Wars guy to begin hmm. with, or Star Trek, or whatever, right? It's just not my bag. Or yeah. Um, yeah. But so when the stuff happened in The Last Jedi, I was like, okay, comes kind, of, kind of flimsy, but whatever. But now when I see how it's affecting this show that I've kind of grown to love, I didn't start it from day one. It took me a while to actually get into Game of Thrones. And like friends getting into it and talking about it, kind of like lost friends getting together, talking mm-hmm. about it and creating this, like a reason to call your friends all the time. Like me and my buddy in Calgary usually talk once every two months. We talk every week or twice a week about this show. And we were very close before and we're still very close and it'll continue. But it's 
you know, when you create something and you're a part of something, the, the the Game of Thrones has become a vessel for a lot of people to become a part of something. Yeah. You know, so I can see how a lot of people are upset about it and I can see why people are upset at The Last Jedi and how this whole subverting expectations thing can go south. So that's all I have. Mm-hmm. Should we wrap this up? Sure. I'm very tired, yeah. You're very tired? <laughs> I'm an old man. I go to bed like really early now. Like 1030. I don't know why. I don't see. I don't understand my sleep schedule. Maybe you need to go to the doctor. I wake up at like five or six. That's probably it. But like, I don't do it purposefully. I just wake up. The moment I wake up. Oh, also, it's completely random. We watched that Austin Powers over the weekend. Yeah, it was good. So Is it good. just the first one on Netflix? Or? Yeah, it yeah. still holds up. So good. I, we were like, all of us were there, like, and it was so much fun to watch. It was a great time, and coming to America, which is Classic. one of my favorites. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Um, okay, let's wrap this thing up because okay. we've uh, we're past our time, and by past our time, I mean let's all go home. Um, all right, thank you everybody who's listening. Um, I'm sorry that it started off like such a disaster because my laptop decided to freeze, so we had to kind of restart everything. So wherever you're listening from, uh, if you're listening again, once again, if you're listening, sorry, fuck, I can't do my endings. If you're listening on Stitcher. Thank you for checking us out on Stitcher. This is our first episode on there and wherever else you're listening from, from the Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff. Thank you so much. Make sure you're following Entertain Facts on Instagram and the F Word Podcast on Instagram. You can find our Facebook, the F Word Podcast. Podcast. You can post something on there if you'd like. Uh, comment. And if you are listening from somewhere where you can leave a comment or a like or something, Drop us a line. It'd be great. And you can also email us at the effort podcast at gmail.com, which no one really does except for one fan. Like um, regularly or just once? We used to be regularly. I haven't talked to him for a bit. Uh, but that's it. I'm G. Big F. Vass. And we are out. Vaseline. Vaseline.